Hi everybody, thanks for viewing this video on YouTube today. Um, the, the fly I'm going to be tying today is going to be using this, basically it feels like a mysterious or magic material known as snowshoe rabbit feet. This material has been used recently over the last um, number of years, maybe a dozen years that I can at least remember. And it just has some great qualities because it really seems to capture a lot of the water, yet it's really waterproof and it really is resilient to use as a fly. I'll be showing you a few techniques to use with this pattern, um, but also I'm going to put it on a fly. It's, it's going to be a very general pattern. I'll be tying a, a BWO, a bluing olive, a little darker shade today. And uh, while I'm tying this fly, I just want you to know this, this pattern that I'll be tying today can be modified a number of different ways. I will explain a couple of the ways while viewing the video on how you can use it either as an, uh, an emerger, as the actual done, and possibly even as a spinner. So it's really, it's a highly adaptable fly. It's very durable. I will tell you that the snowshoe rabbit feet is a great wing material. However, whenever I'm using this fly on tailwaters and on really finicky trout, I prefer to use CDC. For those of you who use CDC, you know it can really be a pain in the butt because once it gets wet, it's really tough to get it dry again. There's a little bit of a process that most of us have to go through to get it dry, and it's a little tougher to get to that next fish when you're using CDC, though it's just an incredible material as well. So I will tie this fly at times with a CDC wing too, um, but for this one today, it's going to be a snowshoe rabbit wing. Um, it's a really great material, and I highly recommend you using it. So I'm going to show you the materials right now. Um, I'll We'll take a quick peek at a finished fly, and then I'll take you through the steps of tying this fly with this snowshoe rabbit feet. Thanks, everybody. All right, before we start tying this, here's a quick peek at the finished fly. Um, very simple fly, very few materials. The wing is, again, tied with snowshoe rabbit feet. Um, it's a dun-colored wing that I used in this pattern, but you can kind of vary the color based on the mayfly that you're imitating. The body I used is a golden olive. I think it's a uh, possum dubbing, just a a tight dubbing for the most part that does have that buggy look. And then finally for the for the tail, it's just a micro fibbit tail. Um, if you notice, I do have mine slanting a little bit. I'll give you a couple tips on how to slant that. But if you look at this fly from the bottom, a very buggy looking fly. I may have oversized this wing a little bit. I tend to go a little crazy sometimes when I'm using this snowshoe rabbit because I tend to use it in kind of heavier water and a little faster moving. So I kind of exaggerate the wing so I can see it more so than the fish. But that's just a quick peek at the fly. Very Again, very simple, very few materials. And uh, now I'll show you how to tie this pattern. All right, let's start tying this fly. I'll be tying it on a size 16 straight eye hook. Uh, dry fly hook. I'm going to wrap in my thread close to the hook, but I won't really be placing it at a spot that you'll see. You'll kind of consider the typical location for a dry fly. I'm going to go about two or three hook eyes back, somewhere in that range, and that's where I'll stop my thread. All right, the next step, we're going to be tying in this material, the snowshoe rabbit feet. Let me give you a, a, a look at my little, this little snowshoe rabbit foot that I have. I'll be cutting apart a section, this clump from the center. I really like to, to focus on the center and then move out from the center. So I'm just going to pull a nice little clump. I want to make sure I get these. They're like a really um, a wiry looking feather or wiry looking uh, material. That's the one that I want. So I'm just going to pull a wiry looking section out, hold it with my finger. So I'll be holding the tips with my fingers. I'm going to trim it with my other hand. So after I have it trimmed, again, I'm holding it by the tips. With my opposite hand, I'm going to pull away all those excess fibers. Just get rid of those. Something else you can use is just grab a little comb. Very simple, something you might use for some of your hairs whenever you're cleaning it out. Do the same thing, just clean out that excess stuff. So that you're, you're left with a nice clump of those wiry fibers. Then I'm gonna convert them over to the other side so they're facing forward. All right, let me zoom back in so you can see what's going on with this fly. Okay, so I'm gonna set my fibers on top. I'll measure them. As I said before, I go a little crazy with this, with this fiber at times. So I'll try my best not to do that. I'm going to place it in this section so I know, I know where I'm going to tie it in. I'm going to use the pinch method where I'm going to go around, pinch it, pull straight down. So that's the method. Just so you, I think I've explained this before, but for those of you who haven't seen those other videos, for this pinch method, you just simply go up, you'll pinch the thread, bring it back down, and pull down on the other side. Whenever you're using the pinch method on this, you have to be careful because it builds up very easily. So you want to try your best to almost angle these, fi these fibers up so that when you're angling them up, when you tie them in, they will eventually be pointing down. But we want to keep them angled up. 
a little bit more so than you would. So almost exaggerate it up. So there's one, two, then I'll start wrapping back. And I have it for the most part locked in right now. As I've said before, I tend to exaggerate with these fibers, that's okay. Now the odd thing about these fibers is they really crowd the eye of the hook. So if you look, I was really tying them in at a back location, yet my hook eye is already just a little crowded. So in this case, I may even push them back just a hair to leave a bit, little bit of room there. So I'm then going to trim the back section of these fibers off and just get rid of them. They've already built up kind of a healthy looking thorax, almost a little too much. Now the, the other thing I'll, I'll do, I'll lock this in because this, this material has a tendency to kind of spin around the hook. So once I have it locked in, I'll go back, almost like I can compare it down. I'm going to take my fingernail and push down from the top, try to get this material to spin as much as possible all around that hook. At this point, I've seen some guys who've actually taken the, this material, tied it in like a spinner, and gone figure eight in this sense. Um, I've seen people that have tied this in like a parachute and gone straight up. I'm going to tie it more of a Comparadun style. I've had the most success in that style because it can look kind of like a marger and kind of like a dun. I'm going to push it forward just a hair. Then I'm going to pull the, all these fibers back towards the, the butt of the hook. And I'm going to place a few wraps very tight against them. Just to try to get these to stand up just a hair. They will stand up a hair, not a lot, and that's okay because there will be something we're going to do at the end that will. So I'm going to advance my thread just back to where I tied them off. I'm going to grab some micro fivots. I grab about four or five, somewhere in that range. I, I don't count them. I'm not a big counter with, with tailing fibers. If you do, um, you're a better person than me. I just like to grab a little bit of hand, a little handful. Let me tie these in. I'm, just gonna, I'm gonna just kind of place them over. You don't have to be too precise when locking these in. You just want to make sure they're they're at the, the distance in the back that you want them. I'm going to wind back, and then I want these to stand up. So to ensure that they're, they're going to stand up, there's a few techniques that are out there that work really well. The easiest technique for me is to simply grab them, lift them up in the air, and place one thread wrap behind them, and now I've locked them in place. Now if you've noticed, when I wrap back, I got a little careless with some of this uh, snowshoe rabbit. So I'm going to trim that away just so it's not showing. Now, if you are a fickler when it comes to divided tails, uh, a, a great technique you can do is grab an, an extra piece of thread, wrap it around the hook, and then pull it up the center. And then when you pull that thread between it, you can separate the tails and then lock that thread in. I don't go that crazy. Um, again, that's that's personal preference. If I'm really going to be fishing a tailwater and I feel like those, those trout are really getting that specific, I'll do that. As long as I put one or two wraps underneath them, I know I'll be fine. Then I just move it back to the front and I'm set there. Uh, then finally, it's one of the last steps. I'm just going to grab some dubbing. Um, this is going to be, again, as I mentioned, a golden olive dubbing. This builds up really quick, so I wanna, I'm going to try to taper it in there, just to get a little taper, but I'm also going to try to dub it very tight. Once I have that dubbed, I'm just going to advance it up the hook. As I get closer to my wing, I'm just going to add a little bit, but again, I'm, if you notice, I'm just putting just a tad at a time because I don't want to build up that thorax section too much. Okay, I'm just about ready to, to finish it off, so I'm going to take a look around. It's looking great. But now at this section, at this point, I really want those that wing to stand up. So I'm going to put just a hair more dubbing on. Um, if you notice, it's going to be tough to see, so I'll try my best to lift up my thread. The dubbing's about an inch down on my thread right now. At that point, I'm going to take my left hand, pull these fibers back. With my right hand, push that dubbing up. Then I'm going to wrap that dubbing tight and really try to wrap back towards the wing. By doing so, that wing will stand up for you. At that point, I can then advance back up to the front, put one whip, put one um, half hitch, then I'm going to just pull it back, whip finish, one, two, three, pull it tight, and clip off. That's the finished fly, a great fly to use. 
Um, it's a really simple fly. If you notice, it, it, once you have these down, you can really just burn these out and just put them out at a very quick pace. Um, you can modify them a couple different ways. The easiest way to modify this to make it look a little bit more like an emerger, instead of using micro fibers at the back, you can have an antron sticking out the back, more like a brown or a tan antron. By using that brown or tan antron, that will give it that emerger, that trailing shuck case. Then you can just modify again the color of the body based on that mayfly. In this case, I use green to represent the blueing olive, and that's why I have that dun colored um, snowshoe rabbit foot for this material at the front. But this is the finished blueing olive using the snowshoe rabbit feet. It's a great material. Um, it's a really high floater, it's something you can see on the water. At times, I have some trouble seeing these flies in the water out at certain distances, um, but this is an easy one that you can see. Again, I will caution you if you notice my wing, I tend to go a little crazy when using this material as a wing. So my wing is probably a little bit over exaggerated, but it doesn't seem to bother the fish from my perspective in the areas that I fish. So if you're gonna be using this fly, you may wanna cut that wing back just a little bit, trim it down maybe 25% less than me, but I will use this fly in a little bit more of fast water in a location that I feel like that, that wing will really help me out. If it gets close to the spinner, you wanna keep something like this on, you just wanna then pull it apart kind of pull it down on both sides and I'll give you that top look. So it looks like those wings are setting on that on the surface. If you pull them down, you can really do that easily. Um, there's some great some great tricks for doing that. If you use that UV knot sense, you can always pull them down, put the UV knot sense at the very top, and then use your UV burner and it will lock those in place kind of like an epoxy. So this is a fly that can be modified on the stream. Um, you can change it while you're at the vise and tie it a couple different ways. It's a highly effective pattern, a very easy one. Uh, I really recommend you just get sitting down at the vise and burning out a few of these in some of your favorite colors to represent the flies in your region. Well, thanks as always for uh, watching this YouTube video. Uh, I hope you were able to pick up a couple new tips and techniques uh, while watching this. Feel free to comment on it. Um, a lot of people have been emailing me asking me for some other flies to tie. Uh, I promise you I will do my best to get your fly in the rotation. And um, thanks again for watching.